Welcome to an introduction to transducers, presented to you by the Support Center for Microsystems Education. In this lesson, we will define transducers and discuss several types of transducers found in both the macro and micro scales. With the advent of the Internet of Things and the growing use of portable devices, there is an increasing demand for sensors and transducers to get smaller. Many macro-sized transducers are now being manufactured at much smaller scales for less costs, wider usage, and more efficient results. So what is a transducer? A transducer is a device that converts one form of energy to another. Examples of transducers include a light bulb, a microphone, and a motor. The incandescent light bulb converts current flowing through a filament into light. The microphone converts sound waves into electrical impulses, or electrical energy. The motor converts electrical energy, or more specifically electromagnetic energy, into motion or mechanical energy. Can you think of other types of transducers? How about a loudspeaker? A loudspeaker converts electrical impulses into sound waves or sound. A solar cell converts light into electricity and the thermocouple converts thermal energy into electrical energy. Some actuators are transducers. What is an actuator? An actuator is a device that moves something or creates motion, such as a lever, a gear, or a hydraulic cylinder. So why are they also considered transducers? Because in some cases they are converting one form of energy to another. Which of the transducers from the previous slide is an actuator as well? the light bulb, the microphone, or the motor? The answer would be the motor, because the motor converts electrical energy into movement or motion. The output motion of the motor can be used to turn gears, raise levers, and move pistons up and down. Therefore, a motor is both a transducer, since it converts electrical energy to mechanical energy, and an actuator, because it moves something. Transducers and sensors usually work hand in hand. Many sensors are comprised of a transducer and the electronics needed to evaluate the transducer's input and output. A sensor can be defined as a device that receives and responds to a signal. This signal is produced by some type of energy such as heat, light, motion, or chemical reaction, which in many cases is the output from a transducer. Once a sensor detects one or more of these signals, it converts it into a readable output. The output could be a readable scale, such as a scale on a mercury thermometer, or an analog or digital readout. Let's take the example of a thermometer. Here are the images of both a mercury thermometer and a digital thermometer. The mercury thermometer contains a small reservoir of mercury in the tip. As the temperature of the mercury increases, the mercury expands and moves up the tube to a marking that represents the temperature. In place of the mercury, the digital thermometer uses a thermocouple, which converts heat to voltage. The voltage output of the thermocouple is used to indicate an increase or decrease in temperature. Sensors are used in all aspects of life to detect and or measure many different conditions. Try and think of some other types of sensors that you might be familiar with. Now that you know the difference between transducers, sensors, and actuators, let's break the transducer down even further and talk about its basic concepts. We'll start with variables. There are many variables that we measure and rely on their output on a daily basis, such as the speed of a car, heater levels, oven temperatures, and light levels. The device that converts one type of input to another type of output are transducers. For example, going back to the incandescent light bulb, the more current or input that flows through the tungsten filament, which is the transducer, the brighter the bulb, or the output. The tungsten filament is converting electrical energy to light. So once again, a transducer can be a simple device or substance like the tungsten filament, or the mercury in the thermometer that converts an input energy into a different output energy, such as current to light or temperature to motion. Transducers come in many varieties, converting many different types of energy. So let's talk about the different types of transducers. Electrochemical transducers convert energy from a chemical reaction or a chemical change to electrical energy. 
Some common electrochemical transducers are the pH probe, molecular electric transducers, fuel cells, and batteries. The pH probe measures the pH at the tip of the probe by converting the hydrogen cation activity to voltage. For the amount of cation activity that indicates one pH unit, approximately 0.06 volts is produced by the probe, or pH transducer. Molecular electric transducers, or METs, are a class of inertial sensors, such as accelerometers, gyroscopes, and seismometers, or a special type of electrolytic cell. METs use the motion in a liquid electrolyte to increase or decrease ion current flowing between two electrodes. The motion of the liquid is created by the motion of the device to which the MET is attached. Another electrochemical transducer is the fuel cell. A fuel cell converts the chemical energy from a fuel into electricity through a chemical reaction with oxygen or another oxidizing agent. Hydrogen is the most common fuel used in fuel cells. Fuel cells are different from batteries in that they require a constant source of fuel and oxygen to run, but they can produce electricity continually for as long as the fuel is supplied. We are all familiar with batteries. Batteries are transducers that convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Let's take a closer look at the battery. A battery converts chemical energy directly into electrical energy. A cathode and an anode of two dissimilar metals are immersed in an electrolyte solution containing salt of their respective metals. A medium, in this case the salt bridge, separates the two electrodes but allows ions to flow through the bridge from one solution to the other. Due to the flow of ions between the two solutions, a potential difference, or voltage, is created. If a wire is placed connecting the two pieces of metals or the electrodes, then current flows. The amount of voltage developed across the cathode and the anode depends on the materials that make up the battery. The fabrication of micro-sized batteries is a challenge, but a challenge that needs to be met. Micro-sized sensors require micro-sized batteries in order to operate, especially when those sensors are placed in remote areas such as the ocean floor, embedded into bridges and roads, or in internal or in vivo devices, such as pacemakers. This is an illustration of a battery that is being developed by Sandia National Laboratories that may be used in vivo to power an artificial retinal prosthesis. So how do you get a long-lasting battery from a device that is smaller than the diameter of a strand of hair? Traditional batteries have a two-dimensional array of positive and negative electrodes stacked on top of one another, like sheets of paper. Increasing battery power means adding more electrode layers, more weight, and more size. One solution to creating smaller batteries is to fabricate a three-dimensional microelectrode array consisting of high aspect ratio carbon posts, which are much smaller than they are wide. These posts are between 100 nanometers to one nanometer in diameter, and they serve as the electrodes for carbon MEMS batteries. Other types of transducers include electroacoustic, electromagnetic, and electrostatic transducers. Electroacoustic transducers work with sound energy and electrical energy. Common electroacoustic transducers include loudspeakers that convert an electrical signal into sound, microphones that convert sound waves in air into an electrical signal, and hydrophones that convert sound waves in water into an electrical signal. MEMS hydrophones are currently being used to detect various sounds within our oceans. Anchored to the bottom of the ocean or dragged behind a ship, micro-sized hydrophones detect the sounds generated by ships, submarines, ocean waves, and marine animals. Common electromagnetic transducers include magnetic cartridges and generators, which convert motion and a magnetic field into an electrical signal. Electromagnetically driven and sensed MEMS gyroscopes are used widely in smartphones and tablets. These gyroscopes use a permanent magnet and a resonating ring to detect rotation or motion. The detected motion creates a capacitive charge within the device. Common electrostatic transducers include the electrometer, which converts static or energy from a vibrating ring into electricity and the Van de Graaff generator, which converts a buildup of static charge into high voltage. MEMS electrostatic transducers are found in MEMS resonators, 
on-off valves for fuel injection, and drop ejectors that use an electrostatically driven piston. A common electrostatic microtransducer is the comb drive. Refer to the Introduction to Transducers lesson to learn how a MEMS comb drive works. Electromechanical transducers are transducers that either convert electrical energy to mechanical energy or motion, or convert mechanical movement, such as deformation or stress, into electrical energy. Electromechanical transducers, some of which are also called actuators, include generators, which convert mechanical energy or motion into electrical energy. Galvanometers, which convert the electric current of a coil in a magnetic field into movement, and motors, which convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. Strain gauges are mechanical transducers found in many MEMS components. A strain gauge converts the deformation, including the stress or strain of a material, into a change in the material's electrical resistance, and thus a change in current flowing through the material. Referring to the strain gauge on the bottom left, each leg of the gauge has a resistance determined primarily by the material itself. As the gauge stretches or is strained, the legs get longer, increasing the resistance in each leg and thus the overall resistance of the gauge. The image on the bottom right is of a printed wireless humidity sensor, which is printed with an inkjet printer using silver nanoparticle-based ink. Here is an example of a strain gauge at work. Strain gauges are commonly incorporated into MEMS devices such as pressure sensors and micro cantilevers. MEMS strain gauges use the piezoelectric properties of metals and other materials to change the resistance of the material when the strain gauge is stretched due to mechanical movement, stress, or strain. This image shows a micro cantilever with a strain gauge used to measure an increase in cantilever mass. As the analytes, or particles being analyzed, attach to the probe coating on the cantilever, the mass of the cantilever increases, causing the cantilever to bend and the strain of the gauge to lengthen. This changes the resistance of the gauge and thus the amount of current flowing through it. This change in current is proportional to the change in the cantilever's mass. Two other types of transducers include photoelectric and thermoelectric. Photoelectric transducers convert light energy to electrical energy, or the other way around. Thermoelectric transducers convert heat energy to electrical energy, or vice versa. Types of photoelectric transducers include the cathode ray tube, shown here, light bulbs, laser diodes, and light emitting diodes. Thermoelectric transducers include the thermocouple and thermistor. The thermocouple converts heat energy to electrical energy, while the thermistor is a component that experiences changes in resistance with changes in temperature. In other words, as the temperature of the thermistor increases, so does its resistance. Micro-sized transducers that use temperature, chemical reactions, and mechanical stress to produce changes in voltage, resistance, resonant frequency, or light are used throughout microsensors. Such transducers are used in MEMS pressure sensors, temperature sensors, chemical sensor arrays, and optical modulators. Think about types of transducers you are most familiar with. Look around you. Think about your home, your car, your mobile devices. How many devices are sensing something? How do transducers affect your everyday life? A transducer is a device that converts one form of energy into another. Transducers are used in all aspects of life to measure changes in the environment, to enhance everyday applications, and to learn more about the world around us. An actuator is a device that converts energy into motion. Therefore, an actuator can also be a transducer. When the output of the transducer is converted to a readable format, the device is called a sensor. Thank you for watching. Be sure to visit the SCME Support Center website for access to educational materials for many microsystems topics.